Life Audio. Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. And I just want to thank everyone for joining us and for sharing especially those in our group. If you're on Facebook, be sure to check out our Facebook group. Just go to groups in Facebook and look for Daily Bible Podcast. Okay, so today we read Isaiah 44, Isaiah 45, 46, 47, and the first 11 verses of Isaiah 48. So Isaiah 44 begins with a prophecy of blessing for God's chosen people, which is Israel. And God promises mm. to pour his spirit upon their descendants. So and again, the, happiness. Happiness. Like we're hope. Yay. We've got hope. It's I so, love it's, it. It's awesome. Yeah. There's prosperity and spiritual growth mm. that he's promising. And he reminds the people that God is their only savior. He stresses the pointlessness of idol worship and really inherits and their inherited foolishness. Instead, he says that God has the power and God is the only one that knows the future, not your idols. Um, and so this is going to be talked about more through these chapters. And then there's this prophecy about Cyrus. So we learned that this Persian king will rebuild Jerusalem and the temple. Now, if you're familiar with the Bible, Cyrus is probably a familiar name, yet all the times I've read the Bible, I assume that Isaiah's prophecy was just maybe a few years before Cyrus rebuilt mm -hmm. Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, it's more than a few years. It's around 200 years. <laughs> so he's talking about mm -hmm. this Cyrus 200 years, like in the future. So imagine, okay, so our country, the United States, it would it's only been 250 years. So... Right. This is like, imagine the United States is just 50 years young, and it's talking about in the time of James, James Monroe, which was 50 years after uh, the United States was founded, that's, that was our fifth president. It's be like saying back then that Joe Biden will be your 46th president. I mean, it's that, that far in the future. So God refers to Cyrus as his anointed one, even though Cyrus does not know God. And it just shows that God can use anyone he wishes to achieve his purposes. And that, that prophecy is just amazing because specifically by name, 200 years in the future. Um, and finally, Isaiah 45 is the good news of God's salvation. And it speaks to the reader like never before. Isaiah 45, mm -hmm. 22 says, turn to me and be saved all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. So let's think back to the first chapter of Isaiah. And we read this a few weeks ago, and this was even before we jump back into the Psalms. So this is back, back. And um, we read about the sins being washed away. So Isaiah 118 says, come now, let's settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, I will make them as white as wool. For so long, the people have been crying out to God to be saved from their physical enemies. I mean, we've been reading this for months and months, these physical enemies and God save us. But through Isaiah, we're hearing about a different type of salvation, mm -hmm. salvation of the soul. So here God God calls for the nations, not just Israel, the nations to turn to him for salvation because he has the power to save. And this chapter concludes with the assertion that all creation will eventually acknowledge God's sovereignty and all who resist them will be put to shame. So I just love that. All the nations now are being called all to the, the salvation. Nations. And just a reminder that God is the first and the last. He is the only one. It's because he he picks up in Isaiah 46, reminding his children that he is their God and only mm. him. There is only one God. There is no other like him. There is no other period. He is the only God. Idols cannot do anything for them, only God. And he reminds his children, he reminds Israel to not forget, to keep that in mind. He says, remember the things he has done for them in the past, like 
Do not forget. Remember, keep those in mind for he is God and there is none like him. He says, I have said what I would do and I will do it. So listen to me, you stubborn people. I'm ready to save <laughs> Jerusalem. You stubborn people. <laughs> and, and so we start seeing we start seeing this this wording come back again. Like you stubborn people, like listen to me. And um, and then Isaiah predicts Babylon's fall and how Babylon will be humiliated. God set them up as a superpower in order to crush them and expose them in public, like undressing a woman for all to see. And that would be humiliating. And it seems like Isaiah just can't help himself here when he sees that how God will take vengeance on this enemy of God's people, he praises God and boasts mm-hmm. in his Redeemer. And he tells them that they felt secure in their witness, in their wickedness and asks them to use their magical charms and spells <laughs> to see how far it will get them. I mean, come on, just use yeah, it. See yeah. what that will do. Like, will Try that it. stop God? Hmm. So, and then finally, back to the family of Jacob excuse me, they are reminded how they don't keep their promises. And so we see God coming back again, going, you don't keep your promises. I have asked you to remember. I have asked you to keep in mind. I've asked you time and time again, you're not keeping up your end of the bargain. You're not keeping up your end of this relationship. And um, they, they say, the Israelites are saying they're part of a holy city, and they talk about repenting and depending on the God of Israel, but they don't, and they are stubborn and obstinate, hmm. and it kind of reminds me somewhat of me, and sometimes... <laughs> I was going to say myself. <laughs> yeah, because it's so easy to like point fingers at Israel, and then it's like, oh, hmm. but that's kind of like me. And and so they're stubborn, they're obstinate, and he says their necks are as unbending as iron, their heads are as hard as bronze, and how they have refused to admit how God's predictions were going to come true, and some of them has. And God says, yet for my own sake and for the honor of my name, I will hold back my anger and not wipe you out. I have refined you but not as silver is refined. Rather, I've refined you in the furnace Mm. of suffering. I will rescue you for my sake. God is saying, yes, for my sake, I will rescue you. He says, I will not let my reputation be tarnished. I will not share my glory Mm. with idols. And so basically God is saying, I'm going to show off who I am you're going to know it's me. You're, there is n- going to be no doubt in your mind that these idols could even come close to who I am because I am the God, the only one. And I am here to take my people back. That's a pretty like hard statement. I will not let my reputation be tarnished. Like, mm-mm. Yeah. like you guys can worship these idols. You can say whatever you want, but I will not let my reputation. It just makes me think of today. So all the people tarnishing his reputation, it's kind of scary. Like God is serious. He is serious. And we, as we look back over this year, we can see many times when the people tarnished his reputation, Mm -hmm. when Israelites and other nations laughed at him um, because, oh, the idols or their sorcerers were doing the work that God could do. I mean, God is basically saying, okay, all those years passed you know what? No, as I'm done. Mm-hmm. Not letting it be tarnished. I'm not la- letting you laugh at me. I mean, it goes back to the Ten Commandments. And what are what are those first four commandments? It's about honoring God. There sh- you shall have no other God before me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is some heavy stuff, Trisha. I thought we I were guess. supposed to be in the like lighter comforting things. <laughs> we were, weren't we? It's going to get there. It's good. Okay. Okay. Well, we need to take a break, take a breath, take, I don't know, some, uh, take, take a drink of water, take a drink of coffee, whatever we need to do. We'll be back after we hear from our sponsor and we'll have the word of the day that's next. So stay tuned. 
Michelle, did you know that ChristianBook.com has been a trusted name in the Christian world of books and curriculum for 45 years? Trish, I hear some exciting news for homeschool parents. If you haven't gotten all your curriculum for the new school year, you need to check out ChristianBook.com. Actually, I buy from them every year, and I just got an order of some new math books. They sell over 45,000 homeschooling products. We're talking curriculum, unit studies, and lots of electives. Their summer sale is happening right now. You'll want to check them out today so that you can enter to win a $500 gift card that you can put towards all your homeschool needs and more. Just register christianbook.com slash daily. So thank you, Christian Book, for your 45 years of service to us. This homeschooling family and so many more really appreciate all you do. That's christianbook.com slash daily to enter and win a $500 gift card. The roof was completely gone. All of our memories being wiped away. The rain is what got 20 minutes of sheer terror. And you can feel it in your body. I watched the fire move down the canyon. The rumbling of the house. My son started screaming, we're going to die, we're going to die. In the name of Jesus, we are not going to die. At Samaritan's Purse, we bring spiritual and physical aid to hurting people around the world. We go into dangerous situations because in disaster, in disease, in war, Jesus calls us to love our neighbor, to heal the sick, feed the hungry, restore the broken. All who work and volunteer with Samaritan's Purse follow the example of Jesus. We go to serve, not to be served. And we go in Jesus' name. Join us at SamaritansPurse.org. That's SamaritansPurse.org. Okay, so the word of the day is tarnish. And tarnish means to lose or cause to lose luster, especially as a result of exposure to air or more air or moisture. And um, so tarnish is corroding. It's also the dulling of something. It can also be the deterioration of something. And God said, we talked about it just before the break. God said, I will not let my reputation be tarnished. I will not share my glory with idols. And so he is saying, I will not let my reputation be dulled. Like when people think of me, they're going to think of the God. They're not going to think of a dull idol that, I mean, I'm trying to remember now some of the stories we've read, but, you know, the idols who have just fallen over or whose arms have not kept them up. I mean, God is like, no, I will not be dulled. I will. When people think of me, they're going to think of the God. I am not going to be tarnished. And so just remember back in history days, I'm thinking of, of sitting in either social studies or history, U.S. history, when France gifted Lady Liberty to the United States. So this was back many years ago. She was a 305 foot statue with reddish brown copper skin. Now, does that seem like that's the Lady Liberty that that we all know so well? She doesn't have reddish brown copper skin at all. So at the statue's unveiling in 1886, it was brown, just like a penny. She Mm. was shiny. Her color change is thanks to about 30 years worth of chemistry in the air um, at New York City Harbor. By 1906, so again, her unveiling was in 1886, but by 1906, oxidation had covered it with, had covered her with green patina. And the thin layer of oxidation that covers copper and bronze, an ally made mostly of copper, can preserve the metal for centuries, even millennia, as shown by objects from the ancient world. But it, while it can preserve, it still changes the way we Mm -hmm. see it. And you know, most things lose their luster. She came in in the late 1800s, and everybody was like, 
Ooh, this shiny. is awesome. She is shiny. I mean, look in your grandmother's or your mother's silverware drawer. The silver needs to be polished every so often to keep a gentle sheen or a soft glow. There's a radiance to some shiny, shiny things. Well, God has a radiance. He has a glow. It's his glory, his majestic character. And, and that has existed with him from the beginning of time. He never needs polish. He never needs to polish himself or his character. He has never been dulled. He has never worn out. He has never corroded or deteriorated. Mm -hmm. He is our God of gods and kings of kings. And as he said, there is none other. And so he can't allow anyone to tarnish his reputation because he is shinier, even though some people are looking at him going, no, that's a little dull. He, he is still the same that he was at the beginning. Yeah. And I, I love that picture. I love that word tarnish. It's a really cool word. I don't think we use it enough, but yeah. I imagine that tarnished piece of silver. Now uh, we weren't rich enough. My mom and my grandma have no silver. So <laughs> we call it silverware, but it, you know, it's the cheap tin or whatever. I don't know what it's made of, but it's not silver. But I have found some pieces at Goodwill mm -hmm. that I'm like, I think this is silver. And you get them home and you like start rubbing it and you're like, sure enough. And so then you can find that bright reflective surface. I'm like, they had yeah. no idea at Goodwill this was silver. Um, but over time, that shine is hidden because of neglect. And I was thinking like in our lives, like you were talking about, Michelle, God has never, like he does not want to be tarnished. He will continue to have glory, even though we don't mm -hmm. recognize it. But like us, we can also become tarnished when we allow so ourselves true. to stray from God. We fall into idolatry, which now, you know, we're not kneeling down before idols, but we place a lot of other things in our generation before God. And then we become prideful and all that tarnishes us. We tarnish our spiritual selves when we worship some creative things rather than the creator and when we rely on our own understanding and when we're trying to figure things out ourselves, when we forget that God wants to guide us, that that all tarnishes us. It makes us dull. We don't shine mm. as brightly when we get all wrapped up in our worried thoughts. Um, but, but remember, tarnish is not permanent. <laughs> Just as a it's skilled true. silversmith can polish and restore the tarnished pieces, God is the master silversmith. And we see this, you know, I will refine you. All these he likes to clean us up. He can re erase that tarnish on our souls and he does not discard us. He does not say, oh my goodness, you are too rough around the edges. We're just going to throw you out. But he patiently polishes us. But how? <laughs> it talks about this in these chapters and previous ones, usually through trials and tribulations. When we're at the end of ourselves, we're like, I cannot do this. Here, God, I place myself in your hands. And he's like, finally, let me do it. And he starts cleaning us up and shining us. And then he takes away our sins, our transgressions. And pretty soon we are shining with his glory. I'm so glad, Michelle, that he doesn't discard us. That he doesn't just like, this looks too rough. I'm just going to put you in the goodwill pile. <laughs> no, he instead, he, he shines us and so that we can shine with his glory. It's nothing that we do, but in his hands, we can shine with his glory. Good word. Good word. Can you pray for us today that we would not be tarnished mm -hmm. and that we would not tarnish our God. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, um, I pray that you forgive us for any time our actions mm. have tarnished your reputation, Lord. And you say that, you know, you will not be tarnished. Your reputation will not be tarnished. You, you want to be glorified. So forgive us, Lord, the times that what we've done have given you a bad name, Lord. But also just as we've let fear and doubt and worry and try to do things on our own. All these things have just dulled us, Lord. And I, I pray that um, today we will just place ourselves in your hands and we pray that you will shine us up and that you will make us, some, you know, help us to submit to mm -hmm. you because we know it is for our good. And that mm -hmm. as even as we go through hard things, Lord, you are going to be there and you're going to help us to reflect you better, Lord, as we submit ourselves to you. Help us, Lord, to continue to place ourselves in your hand and we give you the glory for any good in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the Word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. Okay, so tomorrow we continue on in Isaiah, continuing to find that string of hope and Mm -hmm. also just that conviction that we're starting Mm -hmm. to feel or we've been feeling. And so tomorrow we are reading Isaiah 48. We're reading verses 12 through 22, then Isaiah 49, Isaiah 50, Isaiah 51, and the first 12 verses of 52. So the rest of 48, 49, 50, 51, and the first 12 verses of Isaiah 52. I want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio. You would not be listening to Daily Bible Podcast without their partnership. Life Audio Dot com is an amazing podcast platform, Christian, that has all kinds of podcasts that are going to encourage you in your walk with God today. Podcasts on homeschooling, on prayer, on Bible study, on, I mean, all kinds of stuff, single moms, marriage, but just go to lifeaudio.com and you will be blessed. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hey friend, do you ever feel like the busyness of life makes it hard to slow down and truly connect with Jesus? Do your priorities and passions feel jumbled and out of whack? Then join me this summer on my podcast, How to Study the Bible, as we dive into Spiritual Rhythms, a six-week series that will lead us through six spiritual rhythms to help us slow down and make space for Jesus in the busyness of everyday life. To guide us, I've put together a free downloadable six-week study available at nicoleunis.com slash spiritual practices. The study will walk us through God's word as we learn to embrace daily practices that draw us closer to Jesus. Each week on the podcast, we'll walk through one spiritual rhythm that helps us discover how to spend intentional time with God, align our passions and balance our priorities, and make time and space for restfulness and celebration. Download Spiritual Rhythms for free today at nicoleunis.com slash spiritual practices, and I'll see you on how to say the Bible.